Satnam and welcome, beautiful friends. I hope that you are all having a titillizing Tuesday so far and a wacky Wednesday to our friends on the other side of the globe. So are we together witnessing the collapse of an American empire? Is the Bible speaking about the United States when the Bible says Babylon shall fall? What is to come of the American dollar in the United States? It's already collapsing. Is the United States in the dark evil cabal about to unleash Project Blue Beam upon our planet to fake an alleged alien attack? If not, then why, after 50 years, is the United States now planning two different missions to the moon, one around the moon and one to the moon itself? What's that all about? I actually had a remote viewing or a vision, so to speak, of the moon the other night. And what is actually currently happening on the moon? I'm going to share all that with you today and what the United States is doing with their planned visit to the moon and around the moon. I had a vision, a very disturbing, interesting vision, disturbing the way, depending on how you look at it, a vision of the stars on the American flag. And what is about to hit revolved around that. So today I'm going to share that with you. And perhaps you all can assist me in interpreting what this prediction may mean. I think it's pretty, pretty self, self describing, but I, I want your opinion. We'll talk about that today. Spirit warns of another string or wave of celebrity deaths that's about to hit us. We already had one or two. Now we're getting another one. Who could it be? William Shatner, Mick Jagger. Hmm, we'll have to talk about that today as well. I'm going to talk to you all about the weather and the earthquake that just hit Chile um, and the islands that Spirit told us was going to happen. Uh, the future of Taiwan, along with the future of Alaska. Yes, Alaska, which could be related to my vision of the stars on the flag. So you can kind of get an idea what that could be all pertaining to along with some Bible prophecy today related to the fall of Babylon. Could this be the United States? I welcome you to my channel. I welcome you back to my channel. My name is Joseph Tittle, Spearman JT, and this is Tea Time on Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. I am pre-recording this. The, the quality is of the utmost quality for you all watching. I thank all of my supporters because without your love and support, I would not be able to provide this free content for all of you. Uh, not free for everyone because supporters do, do send things this way. And I am so very grateful with infinite love and gratitude for that. I thank you for, if you're looking for accurate predictions, prophecy, and truth, then you found that tribe. Smash that subscribe. Don't forget to click that like button along the line. It helps the channel. It helps us. Down below, you'll find a link to everything including the latest newsletter that was just put out. In that newsletter, if you open it up, you can subscribe on the top corner of the newsletter. Open it up, subscribe so that you know what's going on with me, where I'm at, what I'm doing, uh, videos you may have missed, and so forth. That way, if you don't get notifications here on, on, on YouTube like you should, then you will, or even anywhere else that this content may be. Anyway, again, I welcome you and thank you for being here. We are just a little over 24 hours away from the full moon, which means that we're already swimming in the energy of the full moon right now as we speak, and as I speak anyway. <laughs> and we're going to continue bathing in this full moon powerful energy as the pre-shadow of Mercury retrograde kicks in at 5.02 a.m. on the Pacific coast, 8.02 a.m. on the eastern coast of the United States on April 7th. This retrograde is going to have its strongest effect coming in from the sign of Taurus. So anyone out there who has a sun sign Taurus or your moon's in Taurus, you should be very aware of the do's and don'ts of Mercury retrograde cycles. And even if you're not a Taurus, you should still be aware of these cycles because if you've been following me long enough, these cycles have everything to do with the shifting and changing of the planet itself in all of humanity. So really, really important and very powerful cycles. Luckily for us, this particular full moon that's coming up in a couple days, or actually in a day here, uh, just over 24 hours away, this full moon is gonna be somewhat lighter, Spirit says, than the following full moon that's gonna ring in on May 5th, 
along with our second 14-day energy shift of 2023, which will begin on May 5th. On that same day, May 5th, people around the world will be celebrating Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> uh, but still, this current week that we're in is going to prove to be ever so powerful when it comes to the shifting of our person, personal energies, uh, polit politically and globally, uh, and of course, with our weather patterns as well. So it'll be an interesting week in turn this week is likely going to bring about high winds globally, which we are dealing with here in Arizona. Looks like they died down, but all morning yesterday, the night before, I mean like howling winds. And it comes whipping through the canyon, depending on which way the winds are blowing. Spirit says expect us globally high winds. And of course, a blast of tornadoes that are going to hit the Midwest and the southeastern parts of the United States, which could be happening as you're watching this. Remember, it is 1.29 p.m. here in Sedona, Arizona. Uh, that would be 4.29 p.m. on the East Coast. And I'm recording this. We'll upload it and see you tonight, probably around 5.30, hopefully, as long as it uploads fast enough. <laughs> so a blast of tornadoes hitting, hitting parts of the United States. And then also Spirit said a short blast of coldness, a short period of a cold blast uh, in certain areas. As we're also getting here today in Arizona, I cranked up my one heater today. Uh, not that the heat wasn't on all winter, it was. Uh, but I had to crank up the other heater. It's so cold out, going down to 23 degrees here tonight in Arizona. But that's just the edge of spring as soon as we get through this cold tonight. Uh, that's pretty much for all of us. You can expect a big break in your weather and warm temperatures to start arising now. Some places are going to experience extreme heat right away, which is um, not really a good sign depending on where on the globe you are. Um, if you missed my April predictions, make sure that you go check them out. And I did a redo for those who complained about the audio sound. The audio is good here today, knock on wood. But anybody that had a problem with the audio, I did a re-upload of my April predictions. And you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, really, really check it out. It should be coming up right here uh, on your screen. Click on April predictions. So something different. Because actually in my April predictions, I talked a lot about weather too. Not a lot, but I brought up some major flooding events that's going to occur because um, the month of April is very highly represented with, with everything that's going on astrologically with water. It's major flooding events. Something different that I noticed this year in 2023 over previous years is that the new moon cycles, the new moons have been just as powerful as the full moons. I thought that was really interesting. It used to always just be, for me anyway, feeling those energies and restless sleep and such during the full moon. But now it's both the new moon and the full moon. So, and they also, both these cycles are bringing about more major events throughout the world uh, and unusual things during both phases, which is so fascinating to me. But as the full moons always do, you know, they always do. They're always re responsible for bringing in change in earth events. Even though some people will try to debunk that the moon and sun flares have nothing to do with earthquakes. Duh. Okay. Apparently, they don't pay attention enough, friends. Apparently, they don't pay attention enough. Uh, so, we're going to get hit with waves of energy and events around both the new moons and the full moons now. Uh, now that we're shifting into another dimensional field here on the planet Earth. And remember that Spirit warned us ahead of the last full moon, if you recall. Back in early March, or maybe it was the end of April, actually, or the end of February, that Spirit warned us that around the full moon, there would be a massive earthquake. And that's exactly what occurred in both Turkey, Syria, and Iran. So I, could, I would expect to see major earthquake activity on Wednesday's full moon, depending on, again, where you live in the world. <laughs> Thursday, early morning, depending, again, where you live. For me, here in Arizona, it's very late Wednesday night. But on the East Coast, it's very early Thursday morning, like just after midnight or something. Uh, but I would also warn my fellow gardeners out there, anybody that likes to garden and maybe put some plants out or anything already, keep your eye on the forecast because sudden cold flows could come in and will come in in certain areas. And then you need to cover up certain plants or anything that could be vulnerable to a sudden change and drop in temperatures. So really, really important, my fellow gardeners. Keep in mind that this week's full moon energy will have effects on both our sleep patterns, as they always do, 
Uh, you may notice this time, compared to the last sleep pattern issues, you know, deep sleep tired all the time from that energy shift and that magnetic storm that we had on the earth. Uh, but this time it's a little different. You may actually notice that you need a little less sleep now than usual uh, because this is an energy rise in the energy that's kind of like a cup of coffee or tea. Uh, speaking of tea, yes. So you may likely be experiencing restless sleep now, uh, as I, I did. Um, that's increased quite a bit. And also an increased memory in your dreams and very visual dreams uh, during this time, this whole entire week, really, which started not just today, Tuesday, probably started on Sunday, actually, when that full moon energy started to really come in. Uh, because we feel it three days before we actually even hit the full moon, uh, 72 hours before and after. So we're in it. We're swimming in that energy. So pay attention to your dreams, because if you remember, Spirit told us a while ago, not now a while ago, recently actually, to pay attention to your influx, that there's going to be an influx of prophetic dreams that people were going to have. Uh, people already have prophetic dreams, dreams of events that do happen and occur, like, like predictions, but visions. Uh, but this is what Spirit said would be an influx of it happening. And that we need to pay attention and listen to what people are saying when they talk about their dreams and the dreams they had. Spirit said, this is something that we need to watch, listen, and pay very close attention to it. So, you know, and that's a reminder because I said that a couple weeks ago. So let us move on again. If you're just joining us, welcome to my channel, back to my channel. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you for smashing that like button and that subscribe button. Let us move on to the fall of the American empire. The fall of American empire. Every great empire reaches a point where that empire collapses and the way things are going right now in the United States, it would clearly appear to those whose heads aren't buried in the sand that American empire is quickly falling. If our current administration doesn't do something, you know, if they don't do something opposite of what they have been doing soon, ASAP, we will all fall witness to the collapse of a great nation. No, nobody wants that. The whole world don't want that. Even though they might not like us, they, they, they trust me, they don't want that uh, at all. That would be not good. This would lead to the world takeover by communist China. And this would also fulfill the WEF, World Economic Forum's 2030 agenda. And if you haven't read that, I encourage you to do so. And it's not conspiracy. It's real. It's right on their website, actually. Um, they're not afraid of telling you what they're going to do. And that agenda is enslaving humanity to on a very unimaginable level, including, including keeping you locked in your city and in your neighborhood. Not allowed to travel, or but they can drive around in their planes and eat their burgers, but you're not going to be allowed to. If you think this is conspiracy, again, pull your head out of the sand and do some research because it's happening. They're pushing it. Uh, in the end, the light will always prevail. Of course, we know that. But to those who scream this is fear-mongering, again, I have news for you. Your head is in the sand, and you're blinded by your own fear of change and unwillingness to stand up and fight for what is right for the good of all and the good of humanity. And people, again, they are, they are rising up. As I said, what happened two years ago, maybe even longer. They're rising up. Look at what's happening in Israel and in, in France and all over the place. But I don't know what's going on with Americans. I don't know why we're not doing anything. Uh, nobody. I mean, there's no movements. Not yet. But it's definitely coming come the month of May uh, when different planetary changes and shifts happen. It's going to bring on. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's go back to fear mongering and, and thinking that it's fear mongering because if anyone truly believes that things are being run correctly and well right now in the United States and globally, I would have to suggest you might want to get rid of that crack pipe. <laughs> but seriously, it's not being run the way it should be or could be for the good of all. Remember, it's all about the good of all. And the good all is not in good right now. It needs to be. America has been a bully, unfortunately, to the world, a bully of the world. And I don't know about you folks, but I don't like bullies at all. I don't like bullies. 
but even our media has turned into bullies. You know, our media bullies things around. And, you know, Spirit says that's all coming to an end. And it may come to an end very, very abruptly. Many of us believe that the Holy Bible states the fall of Babylon is actually United States. But is it? What do you think? I want to know. Your comments mean a lot to me, so make sure you leave some of them down below. Uh, I want to know opinions and what you got to say, but there's a bigger part of me that believes it could also very well be Saudi Arabia. It's one or the other. But the United States would fit into it the most if you look at the Bible prophecy. Although in the Bible, Isaiah speaks, also in the Bible, Isaiah thinks, or not thinks, speaks, speaks of Babylon as a largest city in the world and the most powerful city in the world. I would have to say, if we really think about this, this sounds really more than anything like New York City. And in the Bible, it says uh, where all nations come together. Well, New York City, right on the water, is where all of the flags of the nations hang in front of the United Nations. Lucifer's hub right there, United Nations. Talk about evil and where evil, evil dwells. That's one of the places. There's many, but that's one of them. So, you know, think about it. I would have to say it sounds very much like New York City because that's where the world's economy resides. Or, you know, for now, I don't know how much longer. But remember in Revelation, Babylon is referred to as the great harlot as well, which is a prostitute. And America gave birth to the adult in in entertainment industry uh, and pushes out more adult entertainment garbage than any other country in the world. So that sounds more like a prostitute than, than any other country, don't you think? Um, this would make a lot of sense to my past visions and predictions and even a video I did a while back on New York City and a great wave that could potentially hit the west east coast of the United States uh, and could likely be one that's caused by someone else like from uh, some type of weather modification weapons. Just like Hollywood has been programming us for a long time to, for this wave to hit the East Coast through movies like 2012 or The Last Day. So what do you think? Again, your comments down below are important to me. Because America or Biden, whichever, they're all the same right at the moment, but they want to take away the oil. They want to take away the oil for everybody. They're already doing it here. I mean, they shut down our pipelines, right? And this was a huge blow to countries like Saudi Arabia. At the same time, now they're profiting, but it was a huge blow to them to try to shut down oil. You know, OPEC don't like that very much. Uh, you can't really blame them either. But at the same time, they're just greedy. But not only that, look at what happened to the pipeline that was sabotaged. And we know where that sabotage came from. And anybody could deny it all they want. They even said they were going to do it before they did it here in the United States. So that that's really kind of pissing people off. A lot of people, a lot of countries. The United States doesn't seem to give a rat's ass what happens to America in the process of all this. Um, the fall of the United States would be like the fall of a Roman Empire and the Bible's fall of Babylon. The United States has been the supreme leaders and sadly current administration is ensuring that this is going to lo no longer be the case. Even our native people of North America and, and globally, but our native people prophesized those here in North America that there was going to be a coming of a white man and the very quick going of a white man. Uh, the coming of America and the going of America it's in their prophecies. And 2026, America is going to be 250 years old. Will it make it that far? Hmm, it's kind of an interesting thought, don't you think? Uh, even though the, that's just the age of when the Constitution and all that happened, you know, liberty justice for all but really you know columbus came in and started his slaughter way before that so we're talking over 300 years i say that time's probably very likely approaching i mean the time's approaching for the entire planet not just one country but the whole entire world and remember again i encourage you to always go back to what all the prophecies say that the light shines in the end and we go into the golden age and, and a great time but we got to go through and be drugged through hell first, fortunately. But that's what we voluntarily came to this planet, whether you believe it or not. You signed up for this. So uh, with other nations signing onto the BRICS, BRICS economic foundation now, again, this is clearly showing us that the dollar has already collapsed. 
And the fact that we are still holding on to it is really just an illusion. It really is. Remember, Spirit said that we need a system. And Spirit said this a couple years ago, uh, that there would be several systems that would be on the table. And the one that's fully digital with really not backed by anything, which is probably the one the United States is launching this month with their digital currency, would be that of the beast in the darkness. That we needed a system that was 100% backed by gold. Now, here's the thing. All the gold that's at Fort Knox isn't there anymore. That's in the basements of the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and all the rest of them sickos. Uh, whatever they do with their gold. Or it's probably actually at the palace in, 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 in England. The queen probably confiscated all that gold back in the day. Got it somehow, some way. But that's what spirit told us. Remember that. That it has to be backed by gold. A system backed by gold, the digital system will lead to Lucifer's mark of the beasts as spoken about in the Bible. And we already see that coming, folks. We already like it's coming. Uh, who's going to instill it? Who's going to be that Antichrist? That's going to be an interesting one. Uh, but remember, you know, we'll talk about that another time. I'm not going to go into the Antichrist again, but um, we need a system that's set up the way that is backed by gold launching a digital currency this month is united states in april they're starting their trial period of their digital currency so it's not going to be long friends before they pull pull physical money out from beneath us here in america and globally i mean actually globally they're already pulling away the dollar uh which is interesting you know what's interesting i found i forget what other country it is but here in the united states now they're not allowing any physical money at any of the national parks, when you pay to get into the parks, it has to be through, through a credit card or whatever. They're not accepting physical money anymore. Although you can go to other countries, to their national parks, and they take our dollars. Kind of something a little wrong with that picture, don't you think, my friend? Something really wrong with that picture. And I know I live right next to a national park or state park, and they just ran cables through the canyon. Up, They paid millions of dollars to run it to the park. Now I know why, because they're digitalizing it all. Because there's some parks that are still out in the middle of nowhere, but nope, they're running these, these high-powered lines, which I wish they'd hook my house up so that I could get some better, different internet, but it'll come in the future, I'm sure. Let's go back to this money thing. Uh, yeah, so they're going to pull physical money. I mentioned some of this in my predictions for April, so make sure you ch check that out. But I'm going to stick with my original time period for a final collapse and a new system to come into play. And I believe that time is going to be 2024. 2024 is an eight-year numerology, and the eight is all about money and finances. And you know that those deep state evil doers, they follow those numbers and everything so strongly. And they have all the wisdom and knowledge from the ancient cultures, and they utilize that. So to me, that would be the month that they would do it. Now, now, also this year in the month of October could be a time where we see major collapses because October is an eight month in our seven year. This year is all about spirituality. It's all about awakening. So it's going to be really interesting. But, you know, according to uh, JP Morgan, the United States is past the point of no return. According to this article, J.P. Morgan Chase, let's talk about evil deep state cabal, strategies warned Monday that the recession chances have surged amid the banking crisis since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The Fed is facing a difficult task on Wednesday, but it is likely already past the point of no return. J.P. Morgan strategist wrote in a note to clients this past week, according to news outlets. A soft landing now looks unlikely. With the airplane in the tailspin, lack of market confidence, and engines about to turn off, bank lending, that is. Interesting. That warning came ahead of the Federal Reserve's meeting this week in which members of the Federal Open Market Committee will decide on whether to raise interest rates again or not. And you know they will. I mean, like, you know they will if they didn't already. I haven't been paying much attention to that, but you know they will. Um, so how about this one? This is really dis disturbing, my friends. Major U.S. banks amend agreement to freeze your money on a bank failure, right? 
We've seen that happen in other countries where they took everybody's money. And I've been warning you for the longest time that to buy physical stuff, have physical things to, that you can survive on. First food, water, that's the first most important thing that you should be stocking up on. Things that you need in case everything just turned off today or tomorrow. If everything turned off, what do you need to survive for at least six months? Um, and what can you get by? What can you get by on? Not only that, physical things like silver and gold. I told you silver and gold was going to go up. Silver is up to almost $25 an ounce right now. And I just bought it not, what, six months ago? I don't know how long ago. I bought a little bit of silver and I only paid just under $20 or just around $20, $21 an ounce. It went up a, a bit. I'm waiting for that dip to happen. That Spirit said there'd be a small dip, small dip, before the big dip, big climb. And I'm waiting for that. Because you know, I don't have no gold. I'd like to have gold. <laughs> That'd be nice to have gold. And uh, maybe I'll be able to get a half ounce of gold soon. But I'm just watching those prices. And I'll keep you up to date with that too. But look, major banks, again, amend agreement to freeze your money on a bank failure. So most depositors are not aware that in the event of a banking collapse, banks are legally authorized to seize 50% or more of depositors' funds under the Dodd-Frank Title II Orderly Liquidation Authority. In the event of a financial crisis, the Dodd-Frank law allows banks to recategorize depositors as unsecured creditors, giving banks the capacity to use depositor-creditor funds as the bank's funds in order to avoid insolvency. It is essentially, it is essentially a bank bail-in, which you hear lots of people talk about bank bail-ins lately, right? Uh, you already see it happen. Spirit told us that people's money were going to start disappearing from bank accounts and it just happened, what, last month? What bank was that? Uh, Wells Fargo? Uh, people, you saw it, people were talking about it on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but people showed me. <laughs> uh, I mean, I used to be on there. I probably still have a profile on there, but I got rid of that. I don't need to be spied on any more than we already are. But that's an interesting that they can take, according to this Dodd-Frank law, can take 50% of your money. And you don't think they'll they'll break that law and, and take more? That's what made me think. I looked at my uh, little savings account. <laughs> I'm like, I think I should probably turn that into silver or gold. And I'm going to. I'm just waiting. And you probably can't hear that wind. That wind is whipping up out there. Woo! Woo moving right along. Moving right along. Hope you're all having a great day so far. Uh, in Exodus, the Bible, the Holy Bible, God warned Israel not to play the harlot. Now, I told you about the fall of Babylon and the harlot. I meant to get that whole Babylon um, part of the Bible out to read to you, and I totally forgot because I wanted to hurry up and get this to upload it in time. Uh, but again, God warned Israel not to play the harlot by worshiping and sacrificing to false gods, which brings me to the subject now of Israel. Major protests, as you know, are happening in Israel right now as we speak. And soon Israel will be dealing with a much larger issue, including the sudden wave of terror-related attacks. There's a period in there, and it shouldn't be there. Make me hesitate. A wave of terror-related attacks, according to Spirit, and I feel this will be some kind of an inside job and it will be used against their own people. I don't know what that all means, but that was my feelings today. Tensions with Iran are going to flare up to a very dangerous level and the United States interfering would bring about the Great War. So let's hope that hold that in the light that that doesn't happen. Remember, we can shift and change things by holding things in the light together. Prayer meditation. I can't stress enough that predictions aren't always, you know, happy, joyful, gloomy. And again, I did a top 10 positive predictions. And nobody watched it. So, but anyway, and last April's predictions were very positive, actually. But we can shift things. Remember, awareness is preparedness. It can also help you to prepare for things that we can't shift. But together, when we gather together with holding things in the light, you'll come to find how powerful we are, especially as together as team spirit come together with team spirit anyway yeah so going back to israel here's another thing i thought of you know the temple mound and rebuilding the temple that's in the bible and all that 
which they can't rebuild on the mound because there's already something there and that's the Muslims. And, you know, that would just be war in itself. And how's this part of the prophecy? Cause like literally the last part of the prophecy we're waiting for to happen. All the rest happened. And so what if they suddenly discovered that the mound that they think is the mound is not the mound because I am getting this feeling that it's going to the rebuilding of this temple, this ancient temple that's in the Bible that they say is going to be rebuilt is coming. I feel like that's coming like within the next year or two, no later than 2025. But I'm also feeling that what if it's not where they think it is and they discover that the mound was actually over a couple hundred feet or maybe a hundred feet over from where the mound. And what if they actually both consisted together in harmony, somewhat harmony. <laughs> it's still going to bring about everything in the Bible, but I mean, just think about that. Because I think that there's uh, major discoveries yet to come out of Israel, uh, including like more truth revolved around the existence of Jesus Christ. And I think some of this they hold from us. Of course they do. They hold everything from the pyramids uh, from us. But remember, Spirit said there, we're getting to a point in the planet where they can't hold stuff back from us anymore. And there's going to be too much coming out at once that they're not going to be able to cover it all up. They've been trying to destroy our history and recreate history in the way they want you to believe it to be for the longest time. Look at ISIS and how they went through destroying all the ancient Iraq uh, temples and mounds uh, of Mesopotamia and, and all the history of how we got here and all the proof they destroyed the museums in Iraq. What do you think that was all about, friends? Because it started with the war in Iraq and our troops going into Baghdad and destroying the museum first. That was the first thing on their list. And that's coming from, from tr troops that were there that told us this. And then right after all that, then you saw ISIS going through blowing up big ancient mounds and stuff. It's a destruction of our history. It goes to show that it's all connected to one web of darkness, friends. One web of darkness. So going back to Israel again, tensions in Israel with Iran are going to flare up to a very dangerous level again, as I said. But I see also some type of tensions in potential war coming from Turkey. That popped up. You know, Turkey has a lot of um, precious land that holds a lot of minerals and rich things like silver and gold. I think it's gold's the high one. Uh, it just makes you wonder because we already know that they were targeted and are being targeted. Speaking of targets, let's talk about Alaska. Alaska has been and continues to very strongly overpower my thoughts. And I know I probably mentioned stuff about Alaska here not that long ago, especially earthquakes in Alaska. But this brings me to a vision I had out of nowhere. It was quick, just second, seconds vision. And I saw the American flag waving. And then I saw a star on the American flag drop off. It was the weirdest thing. And I actually did a retake because I thought I was like seeing things. So I was like, what? Because uh, I was actually seeing a flag, an actual flag in real life when this vision appeared and I saw the star falling off the flag. So what does that mean? You know, what do you all think? What do you think that means? A star falling off the flag? Well, Baines, Alaska comes to me so very strongly. What if, um, you know, Biden hands Alaska over to China because you know they want it. They want it badly, really badly. You know, and Biden in their pocket, look at that $1.3 million from China that went into their bank accounts. You know, another thing they're covering up with their corruption. Uh, they're all corrupt friends. They're all, what we need is a new leader to come about who has the interest of humanity at heart that really wants to say, hey, we're, I'm going to go after Big Pharma because they're drugging up the whole entire world, especially Americans. I'm going to in, introduce the best um, what do you call it? Currency possible. We need a leader that has the good of all of us. And I don't see one out there <laughs> that in our, in our visions that we can see, which is sad actually, but maybe that'll come in the future. This actually take me back to the United States for a minute, because here's the thing. Um, if, if Trump were to be reelected, because, you know, this whole Alvin Bragg thing is a joke, too. This, it's all just a show. As far as I'm concerned, it's all just a show. And they're all connected to the same web of darkness, all of them. Uh, so, but at the same time, you got to double think. It'd be like, well, they really kind of seem to attack him. But Spirit says nothing's as it seems to appear. So you can't really believe everything they're telling us or everything they're showing us, right? Uh, I mean, we can look at 
all different factors. I mean, we could look at the current administration destroying our country in just over two years. But we can also say the person that was supposed to drain the swamp didn't quite drain it. I mean, we could look at it in all different angles. So that's why I could care less about politics, because I think they're all corrupt. It's just my personal opinion. Well, excuse me. I told you we need a leader in there that has the good of all in their heart and soul and not the good of what's in their bank accounts and such and what they can make off of China and so forth. But here's the thing. If Trump, which I truly believe is going to happen, is reelected, I sadly believe that this will align perfectly with the book from 1903, The Last President, that comes, which is the second book coming from the first book, Baron Trump's Marvelous Adventures to the Center of the Earth or whatever it was called. I did a video on that a couple of years ago. You might want to go back and look that up. Pretty interesting information. Um, some people allege that they're time travelers. But whatever the case is, that book is very, very creepy as to what happened back in 2017. Uh, Alliance, and that book was written in the eight, late 1800s and early 1900s. So that, to me, would make that, that's probably the complete collapse of America um, as we know it. It doesn't mean America's gone in the water. It doesn't mean that we're going to be blown up by nuclear bomb. It just means it's going to change the way we know it. Uh, and that could be for the better. So if we, again, hold in the light together as, as a tribe and as team spirit, that the collapse is going to bring about such an amazing earth, an amazing group of people coming together in pure love. We can make that happen. We have the power to make that happen. Uh, but again, that's, that's not a fear. I don't like to say fear because I don't have fear. I fear when I almost fall off a cliff, that would be fear to me. But what's going on in the world? No, you got to focus every day on the love and joy of your life and the blessings and miracles. The more you do, the more you get. It's just the way it works. Uh, but going back to my original prediction, saying that he would win two terms and die the third year of his second term. So that would be this year if he actually was reelected. Uh, that would be this year. And I, said, I think Spirit said right before his birthday, which is in June. Um, so, you know, again, it's probably not, we all thought right away, yeah, two terms in a row, we would think, but it doesn't mean that's the case. It could be a term with a break and a new term. And I believe that's probably the case. And what's that third year of a second term if he were the last president? Is that the end? Is that how long we last? Three years? I don't know. Only time will tell. But again, in the end, it's not going to be. Humanity, it's going to be Mother Earth that makes the choices. She is going to be the one that brings the cleansing upon the planet. Um, so again, meditate, pray, stay positive, and you don't need to worry about it. Uh, and together we can hold things in the light and have positive outcomes. Uh, because again, Spirit shows me two new wars that are going to break out, and the United States is probably responsible for one of them. Going back to Alaska again, you know, it kind of... Disturbing to me, the flag, you know, the star falling off the flag. Um, remember in the past, I had a vision of a mushroom cloud, and most of us figured that that mushroom cloud, and it probably was, had to do with the uh, modern-day Chernobyl that happened in East Palestine, Ohio. But Spirit reminded me of that information today, um, and that a small nuke, and I don't know what a small nuke is necessarily, is actually on the table of the sickos that thrive on disaster. So, you know, they're still considered and it's on the table. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's on the table. But I sensed a feeling today of radiation and spirit showed me symbols, uh, you know, the radiation symbol, the yellow radiation symbol, but then I saw a skull and crossbones. And then I had a vision of people with burns, which I'm assuming were radiation burns. Then I saw people out, they were outside actually. They were outside, there was trees, coughing. They were military people, coughing, even vomiting. Uh, and that's where I saw the burns. This was outside. So this has to be some type of, a, and it was, it was felt very radiation related. But I didn't, didn't, can't say that this is from a blast because I didn't see a blast. I just saw the scene that I just described to you. Uh, and more than anything, believe it or not, I believe that they were all Russian troops that I was looking at being hit with this radiation of some sort. So I don't know if this is some type of radiation leak, or some type of weapon. I don't know. Uh, but what spirit did, I do know is what spirit told me. And that's they will poison the lands for generations to come. 
They will poison the lands for generations to come. So I can only take that as some type of a weapon. I mean, obviously, uh, especially seeing troops the way they are. So let's hold that whole area of the globe in the light that all positive happens and they work out everything into peace. We can only hope for the best. Going back to that Alvin Bragg dude, <laughs> only because I'm bringing that up because I had a vision of him being attacked, but also blaming the wrong person, person in this attack. Someone taking the fall. And I don't know, maybe it's a fake attack. I have no idea, but that's what Spirit showed me. And then also Spirit said, you know, they think crime surged already in New York. There's going to be a massive crime surge in New York over the next 60 days. So I have lots of friends out there. Be safe, my friends, in New York. New York. Uh, North Korea and China. Last week I told you all that North Korea would become a huge issue for the world as they edge on the Great War which people call World War III, but the natives in the prophecy call it the Great War. Spirit shows me a vision of both, uh, you know, Z, the leader of China, and Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. And I saw a vision of the two of them side by side, uh, smiling, all happy, you know, out, it looked like it was outside on a stage or something, you know, something important. That was the first vision. In the background of the vision, I did see Kim Jong-un's sister, Standing in the background, she looked kind of angry in the vision. <laughs> I think they're just angry people. They live on anger and evil. But then I had a second vision, separately, of, of Kim Jong-un's sister and the leader of China standing side by side. I thought that was really interesting. And I would interpret this first, that the two leaders, Kim Jong-un and Xi, are working together uh, right now, even including... China is sneaking, according to spirit, China is sneaking weapons into North Korea. And not even necessarily sneaking them in because the United States is probably aware of it and they'll only tell you when they want to use it for their own personal gain. But I see them doing something with bringing weapons over there. So I don't know what they're using North Korea for. And I don't know if, again, this might not be happening yet. These are all visions that, that, that spirit showed me today. So it might not be now. It felt like now, but... Again, something very sneaky is going on with North Korea. And the other part of this interpretation of these visions I had today is that Kim Jong-un's reign is probably about to end, or when it ends, his sister's going to take the place. And that probably, she's probably more in China's pocket than Kim is. And they probably want Kim out. That's, that's my feeling on it. Taiwan, I mean, China's taking over the world, friends. And they're doing a good job at making sure they accomplish that. Taiwan, I had a vision today that I was looking out across waters and it was very, very dark. It was a dark night, probably when the moon was dark, new moon, I would say, because there was no light on the water. Just very dark. It could have been cloudy too, I guess. Uh, and I was looking towards Taiwan and I saw the city lights and then suddenly I saw the city lights go dark. They were extinguished. And then the whole island went dark. And then I saw movement in the waters, but it was too dark for me to see what that movement in the waters was. But then suddenly I heard commotion in the background from like from, from across waters. I heard commotion and then my vision completely ended. Uh, so I don't know. I know that Speaker McCarthy is supposed to be planning to visit Taiwan. We know what happened when Pelosi did. That was bad enough. But now this guy, he's just going to, they're just not, not good. Told you, China will invade Taiwan eventually. I think they're waiting for, I think they're waiting a little while for the United States to get too involved with everything else so that they can't get involved with that. That's what I think. Just a feeling. Uh, ISIS. ISIS. We have not heard anything on ISIS in a long time. And I'm not talking about the Egyptian goddess ISIS either. I'm talking about the radical group ISIS, uh, which is interesting that they named that group after. Uh, ancient Egyptian goddess, right? Isn't that fascinating? Of course, there's meaning in that. There's symbolism in everything they do. If you remember correctly, the previous administration told us here in the United States that they wiped out ISIS in just a few weeks or in a week. Remember the whole thing? Oh, ISIS is gone. We wiped them out. I came in and wiped them out. But now all of a sudden we're hearing about ISIS again, just this, suddenly. And the tax in Syria, killing an ISIS leader. Where's that article? Here it is. Let me pull this article up. But something, friends, feels very off to me with this, with this story. 
And also the whole radical ISIS suddenly becoming radical again, it just feels kind of off to me. Is this the deep state dark evil cabal planning their own terror related attacks and using and programming us with the story to get the masses back on, on board with the whole ISIS thing? I don't know, ISIS terror wagon. I'm thinking something's really shady about this, friends. But a U.S. drone strike that happened about a week ago in Syria, and we're just hearing about this today. This article is from today. Um, in Syria, kills the ISIS leader who was plotting attacks on Europe, United States military, says Beirut. A drone strike carried out by the American-led coalition in northwestern Syria killed the senior ISIS member who was in charge of planning attacks in Europe, the United States military said on Tuesday. Uh, that's today. The man, killed Mon the man killed Monday in a strike was identified as a U.S. military statement as Khalid, Khalid Ahmad al Jabura. That's a one long name, dude. Uh, the military statement added to his death will temporarily disrupt. This will temporarily disrupt the organization's ability to plot external attacks, is what they claim in the United States military. So I just find it really interesting. All of a sudden, um, somebody's yeah. It's just, what do you think about that? Again, down below, tell me your comments. I'm really curious what you think about that. I thought it was pretty shady. Celebrities in spirit showing us that a sudden wave of celebrity deaths, and this part I'm hearing now, this isn't in my notes, in celebrity drama. What's that mean, spirit celebrity drama? Kind of like the Alec Baldwin stuff is what spirit just said. Celebrity drama. So incidents and accidents on the set, I would go with. Uh, a helicopter crash on a set of a movie. I just heard that too. That's not in my notes. And I told you about accidents and i'll go back to my april predictions and spirit just said it uh um helicopter crash uh on a movie set so hopefully nobody's injured like other than the person driving the helicopter and hopefully that don't happen we'll hold in the light that it doesn't but um i saw spirit said a wave of celebrity deaths is coming and one of these is from a tragic accident of a young celebrity, a male, I believe. One is a young male celebrity. Kind of reminds me now of um, Aaron Cotter, for example, who was found dead in the bathtub, allegedly, who we believe was allegedly murdered. <laughs> but that's another story. Reminds me of that. So this is um, from some type of this young, young male celebrity. is actually a tragic accident related to some type of a vehicle crash or even a small plane crash. But as I channeled this information today, the death of Aliyah popped in my mind. Remember her and her plane that crashed, what, down in the Caribbean or somewhere like that? Great movie that she was in. And what was that movie? I don't remember the name of it. A horror movie, wasn't it? That was good. But then they had to use digital stuff because she couldn't finish the movie. Uh, but that popped in my mind today, and so did the JFK Jr. alleged plane crash. So all those came to my mind. So I would take that, uh, that going back to young celebrities, unless it could be two separate predictions, it could also be two separate predictions. One of a young male celebrity, again, in some type of tragic accident, and then separately one related to a plane. Especially it means we're in that accident-prone energy, and I mentioned that in April predictions about plane crashes and so forth. So this particular one felt more female. This is why I wanted to separate it. Um, and, uh, regardless, this is what made me think of Aliyah. I think that this is either a musician or some type of performer that's going from one performance to the next or from one city to the next. feels like, you know, they had a show or did what they do, got in their, their plane and never made it to the next destination. That's what it felt like to me. I don't know who it is. Um, I'm not up to par with young celebrities. I know her face if I see her. Not Selena Gomez, but somebody along those lines. I, I, I don't know who it is. But also, one, one of you in the comments said you had a dream about Willi William Shatner dying. And I looked up his, his birth date and all and his numbers. William Shatner, I forget now. I didn't put it in here. I, he's, I think, in his nine, nine year, which is all about endings and death of cycles. So that could be very, very likely. 
but also Mick Jagger uh, popped in my mind today. Uh, not for death necessarily, but for major health issues arising this year that could lead to death by this time next year from Mick Jagger. Other than that, I got no other celebrity information but what I just gave you now. Um, I've said about huge social movements beginning, and they're beginning to form now, Spirit says. Big social movements are beginning to form now on a small level that we don't see. But we will see a very powerful movement come by mid to late 2024. So in 2024 is the year, big year of movements, but these movements are starting to form this year. Interesting, right? So I uh, had another thing. I had this quick remote viewing vision of the moon. And it was just quick. It was more of a vision than a remote viewing. But that makes me think that I want to start trying. I did remote viewing before successfully, but didn't trust it. And I, I thought of this the other night with the moon that I think I'm going to have to start focusing on the remote viewing and trying it. I did it for a TV show for Comcast. It's somewhere on my YouTube page. You can find it. Uh, I aced that remote view. Uh, I had to use remote viewing to find out where the girl was located in the city. They hit her in Philadelphia, and I found exactly where she was. Uh, pretty wild, actually. Good video. But anyway, speaking of the moon, in my vision, all I saw was a quick vision. I saw a lot of movement on the moon. A lot of movement, like like people. They were in suits or something. I don't know. I saw a distance. It's almost like I was standing on the light side of the moon looking towards the dark side of the moon. That's what it looked like. Quick vision. And I saw like structures and I saw lots of movement. And what was really weird is I had that the other night. And then yesterday, my buddy Jeff sends me this message about all this moon stuff <laughs> and his feelings about, you know, what's, what's coming up. Uh, oh, shoot. My computer's going to die. Darn. I will stay here until as long as I got. I'm almost at the end of this anyway. So I'll go back to the moon in a minute. Let me just tell you this. because spirit I want to get these predictions in before my computer dies. Uh, spirit warned of a quake hitting Chile, and indeed, we just saw that occur. Um, but I also see a large quake hitting our friends in Australia, Mike. <laughs> my friends down under. And another one hitting Japan. So one of the visions that Spirit shows me, I saw a vision today of a bridge rocking back and forth from, um, just rocking back and forth, but it was from a rumble below. It was like the earth was shaking. It wasn't windy. It wasn't a storm. Uh, and the, I saw the bridge literally snap on one end and several vehicles go deep down. It looked like it was a small canyon, actually. Uh, I feel that this is related somehow to a large earthquake. I'm not sure where, but... Also, Spirit says that Alaska will awaken first, followed by three large hits across the planet as several plates shift. So we got to keep our eyes on Alaska. Again, Spirit says Alaska will, and I just said something recently about an Alaskan quake. Today, Spirit said the Ala Alaska will awaken, followed by three large hits globally as plates are shifting. Interesting, because Papua New Guinea just got an earthquake too, which was also in my predictions, and they had a pretty significant 7.5. As Spirit told us, it was going to occur. My past vision of islands sinking into the water, you know, from a massive quake, would definitely be this area of the globe where the uh, Papua New Guinea islands are. Also, Spirit said to me today, new islands will soon pop out of the sea. New islands will soon pop out of the sea. Sometime this month, I'll prepare some weather predictions, so keep your eye out for that. All the more reason to make sure you subscribe down below and so forth so that you don't miss what I got coming up. Let me um, go back to the moon now. Actually, let me one more thing for um, Australia. Uh, our friends down under. If any, did any of y'all see that video? And if you didn't, uh, look for Mr. MB333 on YouTube. He's awesome. Good stuff. He does a lot of sky stuff. And he showed the video of these voices coming from El Melbourne, Australia, out in the middle of the wilderness, coming from the sky. And I'm telling you, you want to talk about creepy sounds that definitely sound alien. I just thought I'd point that out to you. It's pretty interesting, pretty, pretty good stuff to look at. Let's go back to the moon. So why? Again, I saw in my vision, you know, activity on the moon. But then the next morning, my friend sends me this information. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. 
because just last night I had a viewing of the moon and now you're sending me this information. So was my vision a future event or was it already happening? My feeling when I saw that vision was that's now, like there's activity on the moon now as we speak. Is that why the United States wants to go there all of a sudden so badly? Or is it the United States that's already there? It feels to me almost like a fight over the moon's coming, a fight over the moon. And I can tell you right now, our, our, our brothers and sisters in the stars are not going to allow that to happen because they have a very strict rule to the uh, those that protect this planet. And that strict rule is no war from, the, from space. They are not allowed to put weapons in space, nothing like that. The aliens will, will totally do them in. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. But the moon, four astronauts that NASA picked for the first crew moon mission in 50 years. One's a female. Reminds me of the space shuttle that blew up Back in the 80s, I still have that newspaper, actually, the, the cover page somewhere in my storage, um, you know, because they made that sad joke because one was a female school teacher, you know, and they were like, what's NASA stand for? Need another seven astronauts because there were seven of them that were killed in that. That just popped in my brain just now. So that's interesting. Why did my light just go out? That's weird. My light just went out. That's weird. It's weird. Anyway, astronauts who will helm the first crewed moon mission in five decades were revealed on Monday, coiling up the quartet to begin training for a historic Artemis II lunar flyby that is set to take off in November. November, that 11 number, friends. You know they use that 11 number. The astronauts are NASA's, uh, we don't need to name them, but... Interesting, because first of all, Artemis, they call it Artemis, right? This, this historic Artemis II lunar flyby. Artemis is named after the goddess of hunting and the huntress. Uh, I find that interesting. I find it really interesting that the United States likes to name things after goddesses and Native American tribes. Like, you know, the Apache helicopter, for example. What's up with that? There's something really, really up with that. So they're all of a sudden, they're doing this. Suddenly, all of a sudden, they want to go, go to the moon. They're doing a flyby, and they're supposed to be doing two, two missions, the Artemis mission and the flyby mission. So the Artemis, hold on, let me look this on up. NASA's Artemis II mission, everything you need to know. Artemis II is the second scheduled flight of the Artemis program and the first crewed Artemis mission. During Artemis II, four astronauts, uh, will return and fly around the moon before returning back to Earth. That is roughly a 10-day-long mission tentatively scheduled for November. Artemis II will use huge space launch systems, mega rocket and Orion spacecraft. Orion, there you go, it's just named after the, um, the galaxy Orion. Interesting, interesting, interesting. 10-day mission tentatively scheduled for November of 2024. Oh, I thought it was this year, 2024. But regardless, interesting, 2024. Mm, right at the time of elections, friends, here in the United States, right around that time. I find that fascinating because here's the whole scenario. What if it's part of Project Bluebeam? If you're not familiar with Project Bluebeam, you should look it up because it is real. And it is part of the plan to pose an alien invasion. Remember, I saw visions of planes being shot out of the sky. And, he, and what if, again, just scenario here, if they shot the, you know, the, this mission to the moon, they blow it up on purpose and say aliens did it. <laughs> just saying. Uh -huh, that's a concept that my friend came up with. That I thought was a pretty damn good scenario concept because that is in their list of things they want to do pose a fake alien attack. Why is beyond me, but other than to enslave us even more. So when you hear anything in media saying that a UFO did it, don't believe it. Remember last year, I had visions of UFOs being used for war. Uh, and Spirit told us that they were actually military UFOs connected to the humanity, not connected to space. That just popped up in my mind. I thought that was interesting. So... Artemis mission. Hmm. You know, uh, a Pluto revolution has begun. I talked about Pluto and the Pluto revolution a little bit last month when it came into play. But are you ready to live through an astrological happening that no one alive has experienced before? That's right. On March 23rd, Pluto, 
the planet of destruction, death, and rebirth, is moving on from Capricorn and entering into the intelligent airy sign of Aquarius. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius was from the year 1778 to the year 1798, with the planets taking 248 years to make their way through the zodiac, making this transit a once-in-a-lifetime transit. Interesting, right? Uh, but so some things that happened when this last happened on the planet Earth 248 years ago. The invention of the first successful vaccine for smallpox came about. The discovery of the American Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, the French Revolution, and the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, and the discovery of the planet Uranus. All those things happened the last time that this cycle occurred 248 years ago. I thought that was a pretty fascinating, interesting article that you all would have enjoyed uh, to hear a little bit of. Let's see if I missed anything. You know, that ban on fake, you know, the fake meat. Remember I was telling you how Bill Gates tweeted fake meat, the cancer and fake meat is safe for humans to eat because they found cancer cells in fake meat. Bill Gates says it's safe for you to eat that. Well, luckily for us, the European country, there's a European country that becomes the first one ever to veer away from lab meat and insects. Italy. Thank you, our friends in Italy. We love you. Italy's government approved a bill on Tuesday banning the production and use of lab-manufactured food and animal feed. As the nation attempts to preserve Italian food heritage and steer away from synthetic choices. Thank you, our friends in Italy, for doing that. Thank you. Hopefully you are an inspiration to the world. And the rest of the world starts to listen and do what you're doing. Um, yeah. Election interference. I thought this was another interesting one because isn't that what um, Bragg's doing right now? Interfering with an election? Isn't that what's happening? An online influencer who posted a Hillary Clinton meme found guilty of interfering with a 2016 election. He posted a meme, friends. A meme that you know Hillary Clinton didn't like for whatever reason. That probably obviously went viral. And this man uh, posted memes about the Hillary Clinton campaign during the 2016 presidential election and has been found guilty of one charge of conspiring, conspiring against the right to vote. Douglas Mackey, also known as Ricky Vaughn, was convicted uh, by a federal jury in Brooklyn, New York. Of course it was in New York. Duh, I didn't realize that till now of a conspiracy against rights of stemming from the scheme to deprive individuals of their own constitutional right to vote. I don't know what the meme was, but I mean, it's just kind of a little ridiculous, though. A meme. It's a meme, dude. Like, like are, is she still that better that she didn't win that election? She must be. Uh, because New York's really attacking that. <laughs> I thought that was really, really interesting one. Another interesting one is disasters at concerts. Remember I told you there'd be more stampling trampedes and disasters that happen at concert events and big events. One person died and 28 injured when a roof collapsed during a death metal concert in Illinois. A person was killed and 28 others injured when the roof of a, the Maracu of the Apollo Theater collapsed amid a several severe weather warning during a concert in Illinois. This was um, April 1st article. But that's the other thing. Remember, I told you in my April predictions that we're in that accident-prone energy. Um, so there could be a lot of incidents that aren't like stample, stamp, people getting stampled, but accidents like something, lighting systems falling off the stage and crashing into an audience. I just had that vision just now, actually. Uh, yeah, vision of, of lighting Tilt, it's tilting. It's not falling straight down. It's falling sideways like it's not secure uh, and falling into a group of people. I see that. It must be an outdoor concert, I'm guessing. It's dark. I don't see, but it looks like it's an outdoor concert. That's the vision spirit just showed me. I want to leave you with these two things. The number six keeps haunting my mind, kind of like the January 6th date. I believe there's going to be another six date that's going to be significant like January 6th. I don't know why they want to use that number all of a sudden, but apparently they do. Uh, there was another article. Where'd it go? I think I clipped the wrong article. I did. But I remember what the article said without reading it to you. I'll tell you. Uh, a high amount of metals have been found in cooking spices. That's right. 
a high amount of metals, like ridiculously high amount of metals have been found in spices that you use for cooking. One of the number one brands with high amount of metals is McCormick. I personally order my stuff by the, actually, I got some right here. I'll show you. But I order my stuff by the big bag and I put it in my own bottles. But I, me and my friends, uh, and we're talking about this. Like, what do you think that is? Why do they have high amount of metals in it? I believe it has to do with the chemtrails that they spray because we know that they spray high amounts of aluminum and particles and barium. Uh, how else would metals get into the plants? It's kind of weird. Only either that or it has to be something with their manufacturing, how they do their manufacturing. I don't know what they do. I find it interesting that if I buy oregano in the store, it smells great and amazing. When I pick my own and dry it out, it doesn't smell quite as good. So what are they doing to it? So watch your spices, friends. We like, I like things spicy and life ended in my food. <laughs> anyway, with that said, beautiful friends, again, I thank you for your love and support for being here. I'm going to run off and upload this and hopefully it'll upload quickly today. Don't forget to give that click on the like button. And don't forget, if you like today's content and you made it this far, that means you found your tribe. Smash that subscribe. Click the bell and the all so that you get notifications. And I'm just going to squeeze by here and make sure I didn't miss anything. I didn't. I think I got it all. I think I got it all, friends. I think I got it all. I'll be back again soon. I got more stuff that I'm working on. And I'm always here every Tuesday. Wednesday, if you're on the other side of the planet, I'm here every week. So don't ever miss a show or you're going to miss what's going to happen in the world. Much love to each and every one of you. Be kind to others as you wish others be kind to you. We all know that mean people suck. Spearman JT signing off, wishing you the amazing rest of your day and a namaste. Much 